The last time the U.S. came close to defaulting on their debt, in 2011, the market crashed by 21%. We have now reached the debt ceiling of $31.381 trillion. And the results of a default would be catastrophic if this limit right here is not raised. This is also why our short-term treasuries are looking worse than that of developing or emerging markets. This is the insurance cost required if you want to insure your shorter-term U.S. treasuries. So in this video, I'm going to explain exactly what is going on with the debt ceiling what happens if we default and don't worry if you are a beginner to these concepts i guarantee you by the time that this video is over you will know exactly what the debt ceiling is and you'll be able to explain it yourself so we'll dive into what exactly is the debt ceiling the history of the debt ceiling and debt ceiling raises in the u.s has the u.s ever defaulted on its debt short answer is no and what would happen what would realistically happen not from a catastrophic sense like a realistic situation what would happen if the U.S. actually defaulted on its debt? Let's get right into it. So as we said at the outset, the U.S. has hit its debt ceiling. What is the debt ceiling? Well, let's take a step back for one second. How does the U.S. government raise money? There are two ways that the U.S. government raises money in order to spend it on its programs, such as Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, uh, as well as military spending, etc., and also to pay back its debt. So one way is by raising taxes. The other way is by issuing debt or treasuries, right? So when we talk about debt, a lot of people, especially beginners, get confused as to what is the U.S. government debt. The U.S. government debt is basically made up of treasuries. So these are the two ways that the U.S. government raises money. So let's just say here you have the U.S. government. Uh, frankly, I don't know why I'm drawing a house, but let's just say this is the U.S. government and it spends from the funds that it gathers from taxes and from debt that it issues in the form of treasuries, right? So the more treasuries that it issues, the more debt it has to take on. Now, there is a limit to this debt that it can take on, it, it, or else why wouldn't the US just continue to issue treasuries into oblivion, right? Unlimited. There, That limit is called the debt ceiling or the debt limit, right? And every single time that the U.S. has approached this debt limit, it has been raised. As a matter of fact, the debt limit has been raised 90 times at least uh, it, since World War II. And fun fact, you might be asking yourself if you're a beginner, uh, has the debt ceiling actually ever been dropped? Has it been lowered? No, never. It's only been raised. That's it. So as treasuries are issued and we hit the debt ceiling, then the government votes it to, to lift the debt ceiling so that more treasuries are issued. We come to the debt ceiling again, and we're back in the same boat where you know we're at a potential catastrophe if the debt ceiling is not raised and we can issue more treasuries. Sounds honestly like a pyramid scheme, right? Issuing more treasuries to pay for the debts of the, of the previous ones. So the last time that the government voted to raise the debt ceiling was raised to 31.381 trillion. Surprise, surprise, because of massive spending that the U.S. does not just this year, but historically since really since World War uh, since World War One, which is when the debt ceiling was established in 1917, uh, it was actually established to help pay for the war efforts, right? And like all uh, th things that we've seen in, in U.S. history as it relates to printing money, what is temporary becomes permanent because we become addicted to it and addicted to the growth, the exponential growth that this fake money provides, right? So we're basically issuing treasuries out of thin air. So we are now at the point where the debt ceiling needs to be raised again. Now, what is the X date? The X date is basically the estimate at which the US will no longer be able to pay its debts, i.e. a default. Now, obviously, we don't know the exact date, but it is projected to be so depending on who you ask, somewhere between early June, like Morgan Stanley projects, or sometime in mid-July, such as Deutsche Bank projects. And the time of recording of this video is May. So we are approaching right around the, the range of that expectation. So why do we have a debt ceiling, you might ask yourself? Well, it is obviously used as a political football. There is no other developed country in the world besides Denmark, that has a debt ceiling, but then Denmark's debt ceiling is uh, targeted way above where they're at now. So it's, it's actually unrealistic that they ever hit it. But in terms of this recurring debt ceiling raise, a debt ceiling hit, debt ceiling raise, the cycle 
There's no other country that, that operates this way. Most developed countries don't even have a debt ceiling. However, in the US, this is a way that whoever's in political power, right? Why would they do away with the debt ceiling when if 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 they're the minority in power, such as the Republicans are now, uh, they can actually have this tool that they can use in order to get the Democrats to cut back on spending and vice versa, right? When the Republicans are in power and the Democrats are the minority, the Democrats will then, as as is seen historically, use the debt ceiling as a tool to get the Republicans to spend more on things that that the Democrats want. Right? That's just historically how it's been. This is not a partisan program. This is just fact. So surprise, surprise, we're at a standoff now, and the House Republicans are saying, "Hey, we will agree to raise the debt ceiling." in exchange for 4.8 trillion in budget deficit cuts over the next 10 years. So if you guys cut back on unnecessary spending or what we see is unnecessary spending, we will uh, act in good faith to raise the debt ceiling and av avoid a default. Now it becomes a game of brinksmanship because obviously defaulting on debt is catastrophic for the entire country, not just Democrats or Republicans. It's actually catastrophic for the entire world and could really bring about economic chaos to the global economy. We'll talk about that when we talk about what are some of the realistic catastrophic outcomes of defaulting on debt. Now, I want you to take a look at bond yields. And by the way, I bought a shitload of bond yields uh, over the course of the last two weeks. I even did a whole video on how to buy bond yields. Check that out here. You definitely want to check it out if you want to take advantage of some of these unprecedented bond yields, at least in the last 20 to 40 years depending on which bond yield we're talking about. So the one month is paying 5.68. The two month is paying almost 4.9. The three month is paying 5.2. And the four month is paying almost 5.2 as well, with the six month paying 5.12. Now, why are these bond yields surging, especially the one month? This is insane for the one month. As a matter of fact, uh, looking at Mohamed El Arian's tweet here, if you take a look at the one month treasuries, they've jumped uh, over the three-month treasuries, which I just showed you on, on the last chart. And this is now called a one-month, three-month curve inversion, which is something that is very rare. Now, why do treasury yields jump? Well, as something gets more risky, right? So just imagine, I want you to imagine this. I want you to imagine that your credit card company uh, deems you a more risky creditor, right? Or not creditor, but debtor in this case, not creditor. So imagine your credit card company deems you to be a more risky debtor. What are they going to do? They're going to raise your rates, right? So this is very similar to the bond market. The, the bond market is just a market like everything else, right? It, it's made up of mostly investors, pension funds, et cetera, corporations buying US government debt because traditionally it's the safest debt in the world. So if the US is coming close to defaulting, if we hit a debt ceiling, if we're at an impasse, uh, we haven't come to an agreement yet, there's an X date that is approaching, what do you think is going to happen to short-term debt? Well, investors are going to say, just like your credit card company is gonna tell you, uh, your interest rate is now higher because you're more at risk, bond investors are going to require a higher yield to take on more government debt. That's why bonds are rising. And in my view, if you don't think that the US government is going to default, which we'll get into in a second, the history of default, uh, then you definitely should be investing in this. And, and don't take it from me, Bill Gross, the legendary investor, says the same thing. Now, if you do believe that we're actually, this time is different, we're on the brink of collapse, and obviously you do not want to invest in short-term treasuries. It really depends on your risk tolerance and what you think. Now, let's talk about the history of defaults, the history of the debt ceiling. Has the US ever defaulted on its debt? No, never. However, in 2011, we reached a close catastrophe, right? It was a close call in 2011. Uh, you could you can read about this in, in its entirety, the 2011 US debt ceiling crisis. But in short, what happened was brinksmanship closer than we've ever seen before between the two parties, where, you know, right before the, the, the deadline, it was a couple days before the deadline, uh, they still hadn't reached an agreement on raising the debt ceiling. The Republicans wanted what they wanted. The Democrats wanted what they wanted. And the U.S. government debt was downgraded for the first time in history from AAA to AA+. Here's what happened to the stock market. The S&P 500 tanked 
by 21.5% between May and October of 2011, basically erasing most of the gains that we saw post-2010 after the great financial crisis. Now, as I said at the outset, the debt ceiling has been raised 90 times in the 20th century. It's never been reduced and it's never not been raised and we've never defaulted on our debt. Again, we came very close in 2011, but we still technically didn't default on our debt. So we are now at this level again. Obviously, political strife is at its highest that it's been in, in a long time, at least since uh, you know th those those early Obama years. Some could argue political strife is is actually even worse now. And this is by far the highest insurance cost that we've ever seen, more than 2011, more than 2008, that we've ever seen on short term treasuries, right? And this is because. This is happening at a time when the Fed has raised rates faster than it has ever raised before, right? We're obviously reeling from uh, near double-digit inflation as well. So there are many different reasons why this couldn't come at a worse time versus 2011 when we were recovering from 2008 and it looked like we were on the path upwards, right? And we also had 0% interest rates back in 2011. Right now, again, the fastest rate hikes in history. So the cost to insure uh, one month treasuries is now gone up to the, the highest level that, that we've ever seen, which is at around 176.5 basis points. These are in the form, the insurance is in the form of something called a credit default swap. I'm not going to bore you with the details here. Just know that you could basically buy insurance on your treasuries and if the us defaults and those treasuries default as well then uh the the person who sold you the swap or the institution that sold you that insurance is required to cover the cost of the treasury fully and they will be out uh you know the 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 the, the amount of that that treasury that that just defaulted right so this is the most that we've ever seen and i showed this graphic before but this is actually even worse than you know some of the developing countries that we've seen, Mexico, Greece, Brazil, et cetera. Now, another thing that makes this precarious is not really the size of the debt itself. Yes, 32 trillion is a fuck ton of money, but the way that we measure whether we're taking out too much debt or not is not really the nominal numbers, but how it relates to GDP. And looking here, this is the highest ever uh, debt to GDP ratio, right? Even more than the previous highest time, which was right after World War II, uh, when we hit almost 100%. We're now well into the 120s, right? So this is the most that we've ever borrowed, not only nominally, but in relation to GDP. Now, what would happen if the US defaults on its debt? Well, let me just pose it to you like this, right? So the, again, here's the government, aka the House, <laughs> that I'm drawing. And they have all of these obligations to pay. Let's just say this is Social Security. Uh, you know, this is Medicare or whatever. Um, and then you also have to pay back interest on your treasuries, right? And remember who owns treasuries. You know, it, it's not foreign countries. Foreign countries only own a quarter of all U.S. treasuries. But we're talking about pensions, right? We're talking about corporations. We're talking about uh, investors. We're talking about retirees. We're talking about, you know, retirement accounts, etc. So imagine if all of these people and these institutions who have put billions or trillions of dollars in US government debt because they believe that it was the safest, what happens when all those people lose their money? I mean, it's pretty safe to say that it doesn't take a genius to know what would happen. The extent, obviously, is something that I think cannot be determined, but it doesn't matter. The US government is not able to pay back the holders of this debt uh, just imagine what happens to the economy. The employment rate, the unemployment rate is going to shoot up. The global economy is also going to shift into chaos as well. If the U.S. can't pay back its treasuries that it owns uh, to foreign countries, it's going to have ripple effects throughout the, the corporate landscape in Europe and Asia, etc. So it's, it's just going to bring about turmoil. And then obviously, uh, you know, if we hit a bear market in the S&P 500, the last time that the U.S. debt was downgraded, even though they had already come to an agreement to raise the debt limit, imagine what would happen if the U.S. actually defaults. I mean, you will see a crash of epic proportions. Now, in my view, do I think that the, the U.S. is going to default? No, because it's not in the best interest 
of any single person, party, institution in the U.S. So, so even though it's a game of brinksmanship between Republicans and Democrats, um, it doesn't mean that either of them really want that to happen, right? And then from my standpoint, I would not have invested and taken advantage of this insane almost 5.7% yield on one month treasuries. Again, refer back to that video if you want to learn how to buy treasuries. I'm also going to take a big bet out on two-year futures that the US will actually resolve the debt ceiling situation. They will raise the debt ceiling, I think. Uh, I mean, again, it's happened 90 times in the 20th century. It's never not happened unless we have politicians that are self-destructive and suicidal. I think there's a potential big play on two years futures because once the debt ceiling is resolved and and they actually raise the debt ceiling, I think these two year futures are going to rocket up, especially if the Fed pauses as well in June. Um, but if you want access to all of our analysis, all of our plays, check out the link in the description below. We did open up a basic monthly membership program as well. Uh, for those of you that want to take advantage of that, we send out our stocks, options, futures, our analysis, our day trades, etc. Link is in the description below. Chat with a thousand traders all day, every day, talking about strategy, talking about setups, how to read charts. Our goal is to make sure that we provide traders with a fast track in order to get them from being a beginner to someone who is more confident in taking trades, learning how to chart, and knowing how to play these different instruments such as options and futures, etc. So you're not just you know buying stocks and sitting on your hands waiting for them to, to go up. Anyway, traders, let me know your thoughts in the description below. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram for free daily trading and finance content. I post a lot of plays there as well. Subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, stay safe out there, traders. Peace.